So the question is, oh, and, and we're going to use a linear classifier. So we could do something like, let's say, this line, okay? So we could say this line, if we've got something that is above the line, then we'll say it's a square. And if it's below the line, then we'll say it's a circle. So what we could say is something like this. We could say f of x, right, where x is really x1 comma x2, could be equal 1 if above the line and 0 if below the line. Here's the problem with that. The problem with that is let's say we got a new value coming in, right? So let's say we've got a, a point here. We would like to realize we're, we're less confident that this is a square if it's right next to the line, right above the line, than let's say this one, which is nice and far away from the line. So we don't have any way of sort of showing our certainty of whether it's a square or not. The other problem has to do with the loss. If we just generate or a 1 or a 0, when we're comparing, right, so these 1s or zeros are going to be y hat, all we know is something either is the same or it's different. So our loss exhibits a cliff-like behavior where if the two values are the same or different. But I don't have any way of saying sort of closer and closer and closer and closer. All I can say is that if my y is 1 and my f is 0, then I'm different. I'm different. I'm different, actually. So if this is a loss, different is a higher loss. And the same is, of course, a lower loss. So it's different in the sense that I am predicting a zero, but the answer is really a one. And then if I start moving and changing the parameters, eventually there's going to be some change that takes us down here where the loss suddenly drops. Well, the problem with that is we can't really do a gradient descent when we've got this flat thing like this. We would rather have something, a loss, that is a curve that is differentiable so we can actually see what the gradient is. Well, why don't we try this? Why don't we try just measuring the distance, right? Let's measure the distance, let's say, from a particular point perpendicular to the line it's on. And that way, things that are farther away will have a larger value. Okay, so let's suppose that, so this line is mx plus b, right? So we can go ahead now and let's look at a simple example. We've got mx plus b. We've got a point here, x1, x2. And we want to know this distance. Well, what do we know? We know if we drop a vertical line here that this is also x1. But the second parameter is actually on this line, so it must be m x1 plus b. So we know that this distance here is x2 minus m x1 plus b. So this distance is some smaller uh, factor of this distance here. And if we look at this, the actual solution to this is x2 minus mx1 plus b over, so this is f of x1 comma x2. And this equals the distance from the line. And again, m and b are our parameters that we're learning. So if we look at f, and let's look at its range. So 
this is basically in the range from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? So the farther above the line we are, the larger this value. The farther below the line we are, the larger this value is unbounded. The problem is we're trying to compare against the number 0 or 1, right? That's what y is. And so it's not very useful to have a y hat that's in this range, negative infinity to positive infinity. We'd really like somehow to squish this range down from negative infinity to positive infinity down to something between 0 and 1. So we're going to go ahead and do that with a particular function. So our function is going to have the following form. So let's make this be 1. This function, when x is 0, is going to have a value of 1 half. And then is going to asymptote at 1 as x approaches negative infinity. n is going to asymptote at 0 as x approaches negative infinity. Okay. So this function is called a sigmoid, and it's represented with a sigma. It's called sigmoid because this looks like a, if you, it's an elongated s, so s for sigma or sigmoid. So if we take sigmoid of f, so that's going to be in the range 0 to 1, open-ended because it never actually can reach 1 or never can reach 0. So we're going to make this be y hat. So y hat is going to be in the range 0 or 1. y is going to be either 0 or 1. Now we need to figure out how to decide what the loss is. So we've got, let's say, a y of 1 and a y hat of 0.75. What's the loss for that? Oh, first I guess we better look at the, let's look at the equation for sigmoid of x, sigmoid. So sigmoid of x equals 1 over 1 plus e to the minus x. And let's just look at a little table and see whether that satisfies us, right? So if x is 0, sigmoid of x is 1 over 1 plus e to the 0, or negative 0, same thing, e to the 0 is 1, so that's 1 half. If x is, let's say, large, then this is 1 over 1 plus e to the a negative a large number, so this becomes very small, and so this becomes 1. And if we get a very negative number, this becomes e to the minus a negative number. So that's e to a positive number. So this becomes very big. And so this becomes 1 over a large denominator, which is approximately 0. So that seems to fit.